I've known her since she was 15. You know, I was the only one to recruit her. I went to a practice and she is diving through chairs to play a ball on a Tuesday practice. And I'm thinking, okay, this kid is gonna help our program. She's gonna make our program better. I was really excited to come in. Um, the, the op position was open. I was like, oh my God, I'm gonna slip right into that. I'm gonna work my tail off and I'm hopefully gonna get to start my freshman year. And, uh, and that didn't happen. I was on the phone with her and saying, you're gonna probably be playing for us. You know, and Tori came and then she sat on the bench for two years and just learned and learned how to compete. When Tori transferred here, that, that is when Cal Poly Volleyball took a leap into national mid-major prominence. Just her sheer athletic ability has elevated this program to the level that it's at. So I learned how to put my head down and how to grind and how to be supportive of someone that I wanted to succeed so much that it was to my detriment and that I didn't get to play. I've watched her compete against me on the B side for the past two years and I've had days where she's hit higher percentages than me and I've had days where she's stuff blocked me and I'm like wow this girl's putting up a fight and she knew she might not ever get that starting position over me but she still fought because she knew that her day would come. Her injury was it was hard on the team, but it was almost harder because now eyes were on me. At the beginning of the year, the coaches told me, like, we think that you have the ability to be the Big West Player of the Year. And I was like, I, part of me was just like, oh my God, you, really? I think she maybe tried to do a little too much at the beginning. And, you know, we just tell her, we just need you to be good. That's all you need to do is just be a good volleyball player. And some of her bigger matches, she wasn't trying to be anything great. She wasn't trying to be Tori. She was just trying to be Maya. <laughs> I don't think anyone, our coaching staff, her, the other players, anyone saw everything that she did this year coming. We knew we had an arm. We knew we had an arm cannon. We knew we had an arm cannon that hit a good amount of balls out and in the net, and it was not our intent to leave her all the way around and play six rotations. She's in there and she can lead this team and play back row and do things that she's never done before. And that's the most like inspirational part to see, you know? As much as I hate this injury and I hate that everything, everything it's done to me, that's what warms my heart, is sitting on the bench and still feeling like, wow, that girl is getting a chance. And it's so awesome and she's succeeding and they're all succeeding and they will succeed. I have no doubt about that. Also in Palo Alto out of the SEC, the Georgia Bulldogs into the tournament to face Cal Poly with the Hawaii, Utah, and Pepperdine this season. Holding a diamond blade, throwing it far. Holding your breath still, you jump the fire. We weren't trying to hide it. I, I guess we kind of were. You know, you don't want people to be able to prepare for that. Everyone was just like giddy and we were just like, oh my God, like can you imagine the look on their faces when they see that Tori's in a jersey? I get so excited talking about it because I literally, when I think back to it, it's like, for me it was almost like playing with like one of your heroes and that like I learned so much from Tori and I attribute like loads of my successes to her. And so we finally got the chance to do it together. Going into the All-American rankings, Maya finished really high in our region. A few days passed and I got an email from the All-American committee and they said congratulations to Maya Dvorak. We'll announce it Wednesday. I think this was on a Monday, I want to say. And we were just like, God, how do we tell her that's just other than just like a phone call and like, congratulations, you're an All-American. So we're like, okay, well, let's, let's kind of do like a, a fake interview. So I kicked my mom out of the house. I was like, can you please go into the garage? I need to do this interview and I don't want you listening to my answers. We told her we had a few questions to ask her and set it up with a few fluff questions. And, and the final one was, what does it feel like to be an All-American? <laughs> she couldn't speak for a little bit, but watching the sheer emotion on someone's face that you know 
has put everything that they are into, not into becoming an All-American. That was never her goal. Her goal was to make this program as good as she could and to, to have as much of an impact on this program as she could. It was the best thing I've ever gotten to do as a coach. You cry because you you don't think you can wake up for one more winter practice, or you're so sore that you can't get out of bed, or that you're so bummed that you thought you worked so hard in practice again to not see your number up there. And so I wholeheartedly believe that everything happens for a reason, and I think that every single thing that has happened in my life <clears throat> set me up for me to be able to stand on a stage with Carrie Walsh this year.